So you guys are going to be working on something really cool and close to heart, and that is sewing ink wash uh, and various ink wash techniques, and we're going to talk about some of those. So you can do these in various ways. Um, you know, you can work ink on dry, uh, you can work wet on wet, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history and where these ink wash techniques come from and this is a eastern side of the hemisphere and I am going to show you some contemporary uh, eastern ink styles and then we're going to work on some current stuff and this should be very exciting and relaxing for everybody. So ink wash painting is a type of eastern Asian brush painting that uses black ink like these guys, the uh, Sumi ink is a Winsor Newton, um, I'm using two of those. And uh, it's used in Asian calligraphy, um, and Chinese calligraphy and ink wash and wash painting are closely related. They kind of accomplish the same thing using the same tools and techniques. Mountain landscapes definitely by far being the most common scenes depicted in ink wash paintings. And uh, these East Asian aesthetics are generally consistent in kind of stating the goal and that's the ink in the wash painting is not simply to just reproduce the appearance of the object, but kind of capture its spirit. So you're painting a horse and the ink wash painting artist must understand the temperament of the horse and of the ink itself better than the muscles and bones of the animal. So in landscape painting, uh, these scenes are kind of depicted using these sorts of typical imagery, very loose adaptations of the actual views. So these mountain landscapes are obviously super common and evoke these kind of particular areas that are traditionally found for these beauties, which the artist may have been very distant from, and there's usually some water that's included. And these types of drawings and these types of techniques emerged in the Tang Dynasty in China between 618 and 907 AD, and it's associated with these kind of stylistic features, right? So we were talking about that before, and they start to be a little bit more toned in and realistic in techniques. And these associated features, it kind of included a preference for shades of black over any sort of variations of color, an emphasis on the brushwork that was perceived to be the spirit or the essence of an object, definitely over that direct imitation. And we're gonna see this cyclical theme occur again in art history when we take a look at something like Impressionism that occurs later on in the 1800s on the western edge of the hemisphere. So the Chinese called this meticulous style of painting the gongbi, and this term derived from the word gongjing, which literally meant tidy. And this painting was a very careful, realistic technique that incorporated the most intricate detail and vivid color to describe these kind of narrative scenes, often with figures, and most traditionally, these figures of nobility. And these were made about 2,000 years ago during the Han Dynasty, and they were thought to bring about prosperity, political stability, and kind of allowed for a climate that would nurture a significant development in the advancement of the Chinese arts. And this type of painting kind of reaches popularity in that Tang Dynasty I was talking about. And if we compare these Gongbi paintings with a Western painting equivalent, there's a loose similarity with religious icon, icon paintings. Um, traditionally, there's a, there's a very specific uh, way of painting subjects of the nature that were taught and then passed along through generations. Very little room for the artist's own personal expression and how the works were painted. And the Gongbi painting is based on this idea that there was very specific perceived ideals within nature and it was the job of the artist to pay homage to these ideals using a rigid preset visual language or idiom, right? So now we're going to compare and contrast these with this more loose style that we're kind of looking at. And when we move forward into the freestyle painting, this freestyle painting is known as literati painting, um, or in Chinese, right, this is, this is an idea meaning to write an idea. And the Chinese painting technique of the artist scholar, right, is more interested in the personal expression than the accuracy detail or merely a beautifully painted surface. So that's what I was kind of talking about before in that contrast where you're letting go of these academy ideals and if you're thinking about it in a Western way and the personal expression becomes more apparent, we can see this cyclical theme in art history when we look in Western art, when we see this happen in Impressionism and we see this happen over and over and over again. So when we're, that's what we're going to be doing in our paintings 
um, is this freestyle kind of painting. And these works are, are going to appear um, more simple, spontaneous, and they're uh, made up with a wide range of very visible strokes. So as you can kind of see here, it's definitely sharing this philosophy that sticks with the traditional um, confines of Asian calligraphy, um, where you're kind of trying to embody this inner feeling and spirit rather than record a scene or object in a very literal sense. And this type of freestyle painting really only dates back to the 5th century. Like I said, we're dealing with like 907 AD. Um, and we're dealing with uh, making series of very bold marks that are kind of catch capturing the nature of a spirit. And we're editing out a variety of superfluous detail. So let's talk about some ink wash painting techniques. So the tonality and shading here is going to be achieved by varying the ink density and the viscosity of the ink itself. And I'm going to be using two different types of ink. This is also going to be the differential grinding of the ink stick or the brush in the water as you're dipping it. And then the varying of the actual ink load and pressure with every single stroke you make. And I also got a brush pen for you guys. Um, the ink wash painting artists, they spend years practicing this stuff, kind of like a Zen master in a garden, and they're refining their brush movements, their ink flow, and in the hand of a master, a single stroke can produce these astonishing variations. And you got to think about sushi chefs, and that these sushi master chefs just spend like five years just learning how to make rice. So in the original context of this, shading means way more than just the light and the dark arrangement, right? This is the basis for this beautiful nuance of tonality found in East Asian ink wash painting and in brush and ink calligraphy. And in some of these examples that I just showed you in these swashes, you can see when you are sitting there working on dry paper versus wet on wet paper and the difference that it's going to be able to make on the types of brushes that you use if you're using traditional Japanese tools or traditional Chinese tools, if you're using calligraphy brushes or if you're just using watercolor brushes. Um, so let's get down to the fun stuff. I'm going to show you a couple of real quick techniques um, of just how to do some washes on paper and then I'm actually going to do a painting with you guys really fast. So here's what I'm using, uh, not rice paper, just a watercolor block um, and I have some Sumi ink and I'm using some Bombay ink and I got a brush set and um, a nice uh, kind of hybrid uh, Japanese brush, really stiff. Um, you can use it for acrylics too. So I'm going in right now and I'm showing on dry paper and I'm, right now I'm just using what's in my cup um, and I'm kind of spreading it around just to get a gray tone um, and then I'm going back in and I'm trying to get like a gray shade um, to kind of show you guys how to work a bit with the brush. I love these brushes. They're the Simply Simmons. Um, they're kind of a, a, they have a good snap to them. Um, you can see on the dry paper um, when I went back in over that area that I had just kind of used what was in my wash cup. Um, I had gone, you know, back over it um, to uh, to show you, you know, the the difference when I went that gray wash. Um, and then I'm kind of showing you how to get those solid uh, blocks of color going uh, as you go back and forth as you dip into the ink. So now that I got these black. Uh, you know, blocks down. Um, I'm going in and I am doing the wet paper technique and I'm actually going to do that for a little bit of some Sumi ink and we're going to loosen up. Um, so now that the paper's wet, I have the Sumi ink out. Um, I'm doing some more expressive markings. Um, I'm kind of playing around a little bit. You can see that there's blooming effects happening on the wet paper. Um, you can see uh, it's kind of spreading out. Um, and now I'm going in with the Bombay ink and you can see the viscosity of the ink is different. So, um, this is also really fun. I love this thing. Um, it's a Pigma, um, brush, um, and it's a calligraphy brush, but you can go in and detail once the paper is dry. So moving on to the painting that I actually did for you guys, um, I'm just going to show you really quick and, um, here it is. And here quick two details of it so you guys have a really good time with your ink wash paintings and I'll see you next week